Hello friends, we are not employed by Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do set matrix zeros problem and this problem has been asked by some of my dream companies. So companies are like Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Bloomberg, Adobe and also sometime in the past there are there have been Google and Goldman Sachs and eBay. They all have asked this problem and that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem and it is a very well liked problem. Uh, basically we are given an m by n integer matrix and we are told that at any point if we identify that there exists an element that is zero then we need to set that entire row and entire column as zero and uh, we are also told that we need to do it in place so let's see it with an example so over here in the example we are given a matrix like this in the input and we can see that this is the element that is zero so because this element is zero we will have to convert this whole row and this whole column to and set it up to zeros and we need to return an answer like this one uh, same goes with the second example that we are given a matrix like this where we are to we are given two zeros at these two locations and because there are two zeros we will convert this entire row and this entire column to zero because of this particular zero and we will convert this entire row and again this entire column to zero because of this particular node so this row is common so anyways we will just convert it to zeros and this would be the final answer we need to return so suppose this is the example that we are given and let's see that what could be the most basic intuitive approach that comes to our mind. Well, first thing that comes to our mind is that we can actually start iterating over whatever this given input is. And the moment we encounter a value zero, we can just convert that column and that row where the zero belongs to us and set it up all to all the zeros. Uh, and let me show you that why it won't work. So first of all, we'll start iterating over here. We are, we cross this node, this node and this node. We don't find any zeros. So we are good so far. Now at this point, we identify that there exists a zero over here, which means that uh, for this particular column and this particular row, we will have to convert it to zero. So let's just do that. So if, if I, if we do that, what we will basically do is, uh, we will remove all of these entries and now we will convert these entries to zeros which means that uh, this is zero, this is zero, and this will all be become zero. Now the problem will happen that after iterating this element, the moment we reach to this particular node, uh, we will again have to convert all of these values to zeros as well. But remember that that should not have been done by because originally the value over here was actually one, which means that this particular uh, row, uh, this particular column does not need it to be create converted to zero because of this particular node. So that is the problem over here. Let's see that what could be the solution. So let me quickly draw back uh, this to its original form. One thing we can do is we can actually create a copy of this one. And in that particular copy, uh, we can actually uh, start making the change whenever we find a zero in this particular matrix so that we do not end up changing the elements before they are being visited. So let me quickly create a copy of this particular node. Okay, so now we have created a copy. Again, we'll start iterating over all these elements. We won't do anything over here. We identify that this is a zero element. The moment we identify that this is a zero element, we will actually make changes to this particular copied element. So now we will update the elements in this particular fashion. So all of these would be converted to zero. Now again, we start iterating over this one. So this is one, this is one, so we are good. This is also one, so we are good. Now this is again a zero. So because this is a zero, we will again update this row and this uh, this column and this row in the copied node. So let me quickly make those updates. And this will be the solution. So in the end, we can actually return this copied solution where there is only one entry over here and all the other elements are zero. So this solution would work. But the issue is that we are actually using a big O of M cross N space over here. So let's try to see that can we do some improvement rather than using this additional space. Okay, so in the previous approach, we used a new matrix to keep track of all the elements where the rows and columns, the entire things need, needed to be done out to zero. 
but this is actually not necessary uh, remember that at any point we identify that inside the given matrix if there exists a zero all we need to do is we need to convert that entire column and row set it and set it up to zeros uh, which will happen in both of these cases so because at any point we identify a zero the change apply to entire matrix for that particular row and column why do we use the entire additional matrix to store all the values this is useless and better approaches that we can actually create another uh, set where we take care of all the row positions and all the column positions and all we need to care is that at any point if we identify a zero at any moment uh, we simply need to enter that entry in those particular row and column positions and then convert those uh, row and column position to zero let me show you quickly show you how we are going to do this so over here we will start iterating all the nodes and we identify that uh, these particular nodes uh, 1 2 and 3 these nodes they are not zero so we are okay with this one but this is a zero so because we identify that there exists a zero node we will quickly note this position to this row and column entries so we will add an entry over here called zero and we will also add an entry over here called zero right we are good so far now again we will keep iterating over this given input uh, in the similar fashion so these two are also not zero and this is also not zero so we are good so far uh, next we are going to do is that because this entry is zero again we will record those positions inside this additional uh, row and column set that we have created and now uh, this last entry is also not zero which means we, we don't care about anything and at the end all we need to do is we need to iterate over this additional created uh, sets and see that at whatever position we encounter the zero value for that particular row we will convert uh, convert it to zero and that particular column we will convert it to zero so first of all we will visit this uh, hash set of rows and we identify that okay first one is zero so because first one is zero all of these entries needed to be converted to zero so we will convert these entries to zero so we are good so far again we identify that second is also zero so again we will repeat the same thing and we will get rid of all of these ones and we will convert them to zeros as well now this last one is not one so we are good and we will we will not touch this particular column now we will do the same thing for this one so this is because this is zero we will convert all of them to zero so this becomes zero and uh, this one is also zero so we will convert all of them and this uh, last um, cell also becomes zero and uh, in the end we can just simply return this newly created matrix so this is a much bigger improvement than it, that in the previous one we were actually storing an additional uh, entire matrix where the space complexity is big of m cross n so over here the space complexity is actually improved and we are only using big of m plus n why plus n because uh, suppose the number of rows are m and number of columns are n so we are still creating this two additional hash sets with uh, those particular element values uh, the question is can we actually do something better and even not using this m plus n space and can we actually use the space complexity to be big o of one and yes there is a solution that achieves this in big o of one as well so let me quickly show you how okay so pre so previously we were actually using an additional data structure like this one to keep track of all the rows where we need to change the value to zeros so over here suppose we identify that there exists uh, there exists a zero over here we would update that value in this particular place and uh, later we would know that uh, hey we need to convert all these values to zeros and we were also using another data structure to keep track of uh, number of columns that needs to be converted to zero in the same manner that over here we identify that this is a zero we will update uh, an entry over here and we will mark this point as zero and later we would update all of these nodes to zeros but rather than using this separate nodes what we can do is we can get rid of them and we can do the same thing by using this first row as an alternative for this original uh, additional data structure and also we can use this first column as an alternative for that original uh, column data structure and uh, basically we will do the same concept but we won't be using any extra space anywhere and this is a wonderful approach now there will be one problem with this one and the problem would be that over here we would be using this particular uh, row 
to keep track of all the columns where the value needs to be converted to zero. And same way we will have to use this particular column to keep track of all the nodes where the rows needs to be updated. The problem is that this particular position is actually a point of conflict uh, where there exist uh, two intersecting nodes. So we will what we will do is as a solution we would actually create an additional node and we will use these two nodes uh, so these three nodes would be working in combination and for the first column uh, we all we will need to do is just use this entire uh, first row to keep track of all the columns that needs to be updated and uh, let me show you that how we are going to do the things okay so first of all we will iterate over this matrix and we identify that okay this value is 1 so we don't care this value is also 1 so we don't care now this value is 0 so because this value is 0 we will have to make change to this particular uh, row and this particular column but this is at correct position this 0 for this row so we only have to update it over here so we will add an entry 0 over here right now uh, next thing we will do is we will keep iterating over this matrix so we'll update, update uh, we'll check these three values and all of them are one so we are good this is also one so we are good now this value is zero so because this value is zero we will have to update over here and also over here so we will do that so we will convert this value and convert it to zero we will also convert this value and change it to zero and uh, at the end we will just iterate over this element and this element is already one so we don't have to do anything now this is the matrix we have all we will have to do is we'll have to iterate over this and the, these six nodes and at any position we identify the zero we will convert that row or that column and change it to zeros so first of all we will start iterating over this uh, first row and this is one so we are good but this is zero so because this is zero we will have to convert all of these to zero so let's do that so this value would be turned to zero and uh, we are good now again we come at this position this is also zero so all of these values needs to be converted to zero so we will flip all of those values to zeros as well okay now we are done iterating over this first row now we will iterate over this first column so for the first column we identify that okay this particular position is zero so because this is zero we will update the entire this entire row as zeros so let's do that so we will get rid of this first value and we will change it to zero now we will iterate to this next node so this is one so because this is one we will not touch this row so we don't have to do anything and because this is zero so this because this is zero we will have to convert this entire row to zeros but since these two nodes have already been converted to zero we don't have to do anything and this would be our final solution so uh, if we write the answer we can actually write an answer like this one this would be our final answer and we can actually return this as uh, the answer and this solution works perfectly fine let's see the time and space complexity in this case so the time complexity is actually going to be big o of m cross n why because we will have to iterate over this entire matrix and uh, that takes m cross n time uh, in terms of space complexity we already know that we are only using this additional node uh, apart from that we are not using any additional space so the space complexity is actually constant uh, space and this is the final solution this solution is very good and let's see the coding first of all we will create an additional variable and we will create a boolean variable and we will just name it as the uh, first column we will initialize the value as false and now we'll have to iterate over the matrix so we'll need to know the length and height of the matrix so let's initialize two variables uh, to store the height of row and column of the matrix now we'll have we'll start iterating over the matrix and we'll start updating the value inside the first row and first column so we will check that if inside the given matrix for the first row if there is any element the where the value is uh, actually zero then we will convert that uh, and we will update the value of the first uh, call variable okay, once that is done we will also have to iterate over all the columns so we will create another loop inside the loop and now we simply have to check that whether at any position we and we are encountering any value that is zero if there is any value that is uh, zero we will have to update the corresponding i and jth position inside the first uh, row and column subsequently 
so once this loop ends uh, all the values should have been stored uh, inside the first row and first column so all we will have to do is iterate over the first row and first column and we will update the subsequent rows and columns so we will check that if at any position uh, the corresponding value for the i and j position if that is zero inside the first row we will have to update the element of the uh, this particular node inside the matrix to zero as well and once this loop ends we would have taken care of all the elements inside the given matrix but we notice that we are running this loop from i equal to one and j equal to one which means that we are not taking care of first row and first column so we will have to take care of first row and first column now remember in order for us to take care of the first row we will have to check the first very first element which is this uh, this particular element inside the given uh, matrix so we will do that so we will check that if uh, matrix at 0 0 position if that is 0 we will have to update all the values inside the first row and once that is done we will also have to check for the first column so for that we will we actually have a variable first column and if the first column variable if that is true then we will have to update the first uh, column to 0 and uh, after this ends i think we should have taken care of all the nodes so let's try to run this code okay uh, seems like a compilation error okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit this code our submission did not work for this one oh we'll have to start from j equal to 1 inside this first column so let's try to run the code again let's try to submit it again okay seems like our solution is working and it's actually pretty efficient compared to a lot of other solutions i would be posting this inside the comments so you can check it out from there also i have created a repository inside the github where i have posted the solution of all the java problems that we have done so far inside the lead code okay so this is the repository you can go to any problem and uh, you would be able to find the accepted java solution for that particular problem and i would be posting this link inside the description as well so you can check it out